Hello everyone. Today I'm gonna um talk about the two files that I the two programs that I use for my um for my day to day card creating. The first program that I use is Colin Note. It's a very useful um note taking app that can you can find on Android or iOS. It gives you the option so for every note that you take, it gives you the option to pretty much pin it to your um you know the top of your uh, phone. You can send it to your email. You can send it to someone else's e email. You can text it, and you can save it to your computer if you if you really want to, or your phone if you want. It is a very useful app. You know, for s to to use when you you know you have an idea. And you don't want to come to your computer. You don't. You don't have access to your computer or a laptop, and you just want to, you know, jot down an idea real quick. And it al it's also very useful for like a day-to-day, -day, you know, note note taking. So you're not always sitting in front of a computer when you're, you know, when you're working. You can work mobily, wherever you are, wherever you go. So it's very useful. It works offline, so you don't always have to have a, um, an internet to use it. But once it once you get an internet, it just pretty much just syncs automatically by itself. So it's a very useful app to use. You know, a very productive app for um you know card creating or game creating and probably pretty much everything else that you know that has to do with you know ideas. And then the up other app that I use is called Krita. K R I T A. And I'll show you what it looks like in a minute. Where am I going with him? Human. There we go. There we go. So let me go to the first of all. Let me go to the one of the app, one of the creative files that I use to create my game. Let me open it up for you in a minute. Nice creature. Because today I'm gonna work on uh, the creatures for the game. I'll just show you how 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 I usually create it. So this is a creative file. A creative file always ends in K R A. So that's that's a dif um, differentiator between a creative file and every other file. So the JPEG files end in, end in J JPG. And then the creative file ends in K R A. So this is a Krita. This is Krita. It is a uh, image manipulation software, or you know, graphics software. It's very useful. It's free. You can find it on. I think they have it on Mac, Linux, and Windows. And it's a very useful app. It has everything you need to create a to, you know to create a car to create a game. At least to create at least everything I need to create my card game. It's it's a basic it has basic features for you know card creating and I like it because it's just easier for me to use. It's something I'm used to using. So this is Krita. If you want to create your own game by yourself, it's probably something you probably need. Maybe not this one itself, but it's it's a free software that has a lot of features compared to you know other softwares like Adobe Photoshop that are paid. So this is um this file right here. This is a creature file for my game, and that's pretty much what I'm gonna be working on right now. It's pretty much just creating the game right now. So I'll start off with creatures. How the creatures work is. There are two types of creatures in the game. There are regular creatures, so pretty much it works like a template. The regular creature is like the template with basic stats of this is the crystal cost of a card, this is the name of the card, this is the attack point stats, defense points, health points, subtype of, a, of the creature or the subtype of a card, which is right now it's human. And then this is just a, a regular creature, which is a template. Then there's the great. Then there, 
the great creatures, which are like pretty much different versions of a regular creature. And each great creature has four copies, four different um, varieties that you can choose from. So this is a regular creature. And this is a great creature. And you can see how this one has Battle Brave as a title right there. So this is a title belt box. So how the game works is each creature, each expansion of the game has a set number of um, basic creatures or regular creatures. So let me go up here. So there's there are four regular creatures. One, two, three, four. Adep Squire, Honored Squire, Knight, Neophyte, and Revered. And you can see how this one has. That's that's a regular version of this one on the basic template. This is the basic template of the Han Iron Squire. It costs four attack points, two defense points, three health points. Neophyte. There's one attack point, zero defense points, two health points. And then the revered, which has three attack points, three defense points, four health points. These are basic stats of the of the creature that the other creatures, the great creatures, work off of. So for a regular creature with a regular creature battle a regular creature has this stats this stats while the battle, battle brave version has four attack points two defense two two defense points and two health points similar with this one which is the revered squire this is the basic version while the battle brave version of the card has four attack points three defense points three health points so you can see the difference between the two cards see the two different you can see the difference between the two cards and this one has effects as well so it's not just a, a, a blank creature that can just play and it does nothing except attack and defend this one has effects which this the quick means when you play it it, it can attack this the turn it's played unlike this unlike a regular creature where you when you play you have to wait till your next turn before you can attack with it then destined means that every turn that this creature is on the you know Every turn that this creature is in your hand, it costs one crystal less. Every turn that this creature is in your hand, if you show it to all other players, it costs one crystal less to play for each turn, each player's turn. So while you have it in your hand, its crystal cost, which is nine, goes down by one for each turn of the game, each player's turn of the game. So it's, it's a very useful, the Destiny is a very useful effect that pretty much can win you the game very easily if, if played right. Then there's formidable, which means when this creature attacks, it can only be blocked by three or more creatures. So not only is it you can not only can it attack the first turn it's played, it costs one crystal less to play for each turn that's in your hand. And when it attacks it can only be blocked by three or more creatures. While the basic version of it of, of the card or the regular creature version of the card doesn't have any of these these effects, so this is where the regular creature and the great creature comes in. And the great cre the great creature you can pretty much choose any great creature you want to p to put in your deck of the of uh, a great creature version of the regular creature. So that So um, what I mean is, you can only have three um, three copies of a creature in your deck, of ev any creature in your deck with the same name. But th those creatures, those three copies could be a regular creature or a great creature. Could be all three copies, could be all great creatures, all three copies could be all regular creatures. And there are multiple great creatures that you can choose from. Each great creature has four, um, 
copies that you can choose from that has different effects. S you know, v a variety of different effects or different stats depending on the So you see how this one is, this is the, com the common version of the Battle Brave Great Creature. And I'll show you the, this is the brilliant version. Let me show you, let me, let me show you from um, the weakest to the strongest. So this is the common version. It has four defense, four attack points, three defense points, four health points. The effects are exactly the same for all battle brave creatures to a certain extent, but the stats increase when you go from for each copy. So you see how it gains one attack points in this stat in at, at the common version. The rare version gains a health point stat, an extra health point stat, and, a, and an attack point stat. The unique version gains an attack point, a defense point, and a health point. Then the brilliant version gains an attack point, defense points, and another, and two health points. So the how, how this works is, to make, to make it, you know, fair to a certain extent is, you can only have four common cards on your side of a battlefield at a time. So this battle brave creature is a common card. So out of for the whole game, for all the cards that have common, rare, unique, and brilliant versions, common, rare, unique, and brilliant versions, you can only have 17 common cards on your board before you start replacing cards every time you play a new common card. So if, if once you have 17 common cards on the board, before you can play a new one, a new common card, you have to replace the one of the one of the ones that's already on your side of the board before you can place it down when you play the card. And it's pr pretty much you play the card, it's pretty much you tap, you pay the crystal cost of the card to play it. And the crystal cost has to do with crystals, which is another ca card type of the game. But I'm not gonna explain that right now. So that's how, that's pretty much how you play the card from your hand. So you can only play, you, you can only have 17 common cards on your board. You can only have, I think eight or seven, I think it's seven or yeah, I think it's eight. You can only have eight rare cards on, on your side of the board before you have to start replacing it. You can only have four unique cards on your side of the board before you can, before you start replacing cards. Then you can only have two brilliant cards. So the brilliant cards are more powerful than the common cards. They're way more powerful than every other car every other, you know, version of the card. But you know, the stipulations are, you know, much stricter. You can only have two of them. So if you if you if you create a deck filled with brilliant cards, you're going to be, you know, replacing and every card that you replace goes into your mortuary. That means you can't play it again until it comes back into your hand. Usually cards that go into a mortuary just stay there until the, the game ends. So every time you play a brilliant card, if you already have two on the board, it's very easy to have two on the board when your deck's filled with brilliant cards. So you start replacing cards and you won't have any cards to you know defend your defend yourself with when creatures attack you. So there's you know that's pretty much how that's a balance balancing factor of the game. But other than that aspect, you can have you can fill your deck with brilliant cards. You can have three copies of a revered squire, and all of them will be can be brilliant. All of them can be all three copies can be you know unique. All three copies can be rare. All, all three copies can be common. Then and you can all mix mix and match whichever one you want. So that's the battle brave creature, and then there's also. Let's go back to this one. The ad adept squire. Then there's the loyal knight. And this card, unlike the Battle Brave, is that the Battle Brave's effect is 
isn't as powerful as this effect. So that's why there's only a brilliant version of it. Because if there's a... So cards do not always have to have all four four copies. I mean, great creatures do not always have to have four copies of them. You know, four varieties of them. But you can see that the stats, the stats of this great creature, Loyal Knight, it's exactly the same as this, the stats of the regular creature. So not all great creatures also have, have to have stats either. So this, this effect is more powerful. I, I believe it's more powerful than this effect. So this one only has a, a brilliant version. So you can only have two copies of this on your board. And this is not the only card in the game. So you really have to, you know, micromanage what type of cards you put in your deck. That way you're not replacing cards that you already played, you've already, you know, paid for it to play. So today I want to work on um, creating some great creatures so you can see how the, how, how the process works. Hold on a second. There we go. So I'm just looking out the list. I have call note on my phone, so I'm just looking out the list. That's pretty much where I, I store my um. Pretty much where I pretty much record all the creatures that I've created that I'm planning to create in the future. And pretty much all the cards that I'm planning to create are on my phone first, on the call note app for my phone, before I transfer them to the you know to a card version. So let me start off, um, let me get a note app real quick. So hold on, I'm actually showing you guys something. I think I have to delete this one. So the creature that I think I'm gonna work on right now is name. I haven't come up. With, I haven't given it a name yet. Karen. That's the keyword. That's a keyword is pretty much just a, a word that has multiple. That's a representation of an effect or status. So. This Karen keyword pretty much means that while you're damaged, which is another keyword, damage just means when your health points is lower than your starting health point that you start with the game with, you can play this. You can play this card during another player's turn. So Karen, this creature gains plus one attack points. 
when it is played during another player's turn. Then revenant means that when you press damage then turn. Revenant means that you can when this, when this effect happens, you can take this card from your motion and add it to, add it back into your hand. So revenant only works when the card's in the mortuary after it dies on the battlefield or whenever it gets into the mortuary. So while this card is in your mortuary, when you first take when you when you are first when you oh sorry when you are first damaged in a turn, you can return it back into your hand. And if you t if you t if this when this effect happens back on um, during your turn, the card costs half its crystal cost of play until the end of the turn. So if I place this effect on this creature and you get it back when you're damaged in a turn, it could be in your turn, it could be another player's turn. And while this while this card is in your mortuary. You can take it back, and then instead of costing six to play, you 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 know, you play for for three costs instead. So I'll place that down. I'm still thinking about the cards. So the the creatures to create right now. I'm gonna sh shield breaker. Some creatures naturally have already given them names, while others I haven't. And pretty much this creature just means that's the effect of the card. So when the card deals damage, and a card and a creature deals damage through attack through their attack points. They they can also have effects that deal damage as well, but most most of the time it's usually through the attack points. So when this creature deals damage to a creature or a leader, the target gains weakening one. And weakening one pretty much is an effect that says every time a, a, a card takes damage, it takes one more damage. That's what the weak on uh, the one s indicate. So if, if, let's say it says we can four, we can four, that means every time the card takes damage, it will take four more damage. So when this one attacks, let's say this, this attacks a card with we can four, it will take seven damage in t instead of three. So it's three plus four. So it's a powerful effect. But now I have to decide whether this will be a brilliant card a brilliant only card and usually cards that have um points that it, that can be increased or decreased do not have the stat points increased or decreased so let's say so let me let me give this one a name for example so revenant carrying so I'll call it kind hearted so that's that'll be the name of the um, great creature, and since I've already figured out the name of the great creature, oops, I'm gonna start working on the card now. So every every great creature starts with a a basic card, a, you know, a, gr a regular creature. Oh yeah, before that, let me just make sure I, oh, let me see. This creature com comes with an extra, a 
attack points. So it really won't. There's no point in giving it extra stats. So what I'm gonna I'm gonna create this now. I have to go to the. There we go. There's an effect box, which I'll end up adding this in. Let me see if I can copy and paste it. Yep, I can. So I'm gonna save it. Then This will be the creature now. And then I'll come back here. Place. Kind hearted. Oops. this there we go see how useful critter is um you can naturally name each layer I, I think every image manipulation software has that e that feature kind hearted here just so uh, you know differentiate it and I also have to create a black version of it and then I just call it kind hearted black and turn this one off and the reason why I turn this off is because critic can't it, it makes it harder for you to dis um, you know, differentiate between layers when they're exactly two layers on top of each other. So it just makes it the bugs out a little bit. Save. Then there we go. Kind hearted. Gains plus one attack points when it is played during another player's turn. Then revenant. When you're first damaged in a turn. Or I can also just change this to when you're damaged. Let me see if I can. This will make it a bit more powerful, a bit more useful, because that that change means that every t if you already damaged before in the turn and this goes into your mortuary the first the first effect when it says you're when you're first damaged in a turn when you're damaged again so when something deals damage to you again and it, and it's deducted from your health points this won't it won't the revenant effect won't trigger but now every time you're damaged or i should probably change it to make it more more easier to you know, understand when you're when you are when you are dealt damage you can see how the basic version of a card it says basic and common they have the same color you know they have the same card color but the differentiating factor between a common card and a basic card is that a common creature, I mean, the differentiator between a common creature and a basic creature is that a the, um, the common creature has a title, a name here. 
while the basic creature doesn't have a name and it doesn't have any effects in your effects box. So this is the effects box. But usually the, the, the stats may be the same and uh, the subtype is probably always the same unless I decide to change that for a creature, but not right now. And when I want to save it, I can create a new folder called Kind Hearted. Create. And what I'll do is I just copy this folder into it before I place anything inside. Oops. Yep. It looks like that. Because each great creature appears, there's uh, there's always a version of a great creature for each creature of the game, of the of the yeah of the expansion. So every f these are the four great creatures of the um, Knights of Temis. I mean, these are the four creatures of the Knights of Temis expansion, and each one has exactly the same great creatures. So that's. That one. and then can hard can harder okay come here save it kind hearted okay peg let me see how I um it's been a while since I created a great creature let me see how I word it how I word it okay so kind hearted first. Be a common kind hearted. Save. And now the brilliant version. Because since the brilliant version and the common version share the same, it's easier to see the word kind hearted. In the brilliant version and the common version, so I, I usually don't do that many changes between both of them. While for the unique and the brilliant, I change this to the darker version for it, to the darker version. So kind-hearted. The only changes between the common and the brilliant will be the attack points. This will be the brilliant version. And now for the common, I mean the unique version. So that's pretty much it for each cr creature. It's pretty much a simple process once you've once you've created the background, the template of the the card itself, which is right here. This is a whole different file that I had created from scratch. And then I change it into a JPEG or a PNG, PNG format. I saved it as a PNG. Each version is different, but they're all from the same critter file. I created all ver all four versions, all f all five versions, in the critter file. So the common, the basic, the common, the rare, the unique, and brilliant. They're all in one critter file. But I just pretty much just turned off some layers, saved it as a common version. Turned off some layers and turned some on. The same did the same with the rare, then the unique, and then the brilliant to give you all different, you know, all the different varieties. So now the unique. And then for the brilliant. I only usually change for each variety. I usually only change like one point instead of to make the game a bit more balanced, to make the creatures a bit more balanced. I only change one point because if I change this point and also the stat points, the creatures will be way too powerful. And you can see how the numbers of the creatures aren't really that high. There's three attack points, two defense points, two health points. It's because these effects that you know each um, great creature has 
range the the effects range from you know very being very powerful to being very to you know being slightly weak so having a weaker stat points makes it easier for me to balance out the creatures themselves and the and the, the great creatures and the stats if the creatures already have high stat points like 10 here 20 here 5 here 6 here 7 here it ma it make it makes it much harder to create you know to balance out the the effects that I'll give to give to the creature. So let me save this as rare. Oops, cancel. Oh, save as. And also, when you first create um just a critter, let me just give me a critter tip right now. When you first um open a critter file. A create a document, I mean, a create a application or whichever one you call it. This is where you can change the workspace to whichever, you know, whichever direction you want, whichever one you want. You come here, you can change to this, you can change to that. I prefer the big paint too. That's pretty much my default. But you can rearrange these, um, you know, these borders. These dockets, I think that's what that's what they call it. You can rearrange the docket around, to which what you know, whichever way you want it to be, and then you can save it as a new, as a new uh, workspace. So I'm not gonna do that because I actually prefer the um, big paint. I've done it before, but sometimes my um I have to have to reinstall my operating system or change your operating system and I have two operating systems on this computer so I just find it to be a hassle to keep changing it back and forth and sometimes I have to upgrade Krita and the upgrade doesn't you know work well and after we edit everything all over again I just decide to just stick with the big paint that's my pretty much that's, that was my favorite option anyways so that's a rare so this great creature is done. So what I'll do is I'll come back to the comment. Oh, I, don't, I don't have to do all that. All I'll do now is come back to create the next, the same version of a great creature, but for a different, the next creature. I don't require. So I'll open this creator file. Close this. And so all I do now is just copy and paste. Copy one, two, three. So I'm, all I'm copying is the the title of the great creature, the name of the great creature, the effects box, and pretty much that's it. So I copy it. Paste it here. Turn this one off. And now I just have to edit this. Now I'll probably end up deleting these. You know, to save up. Because each layer actually adds up to the to the critter file file size. So the less layers you have, the less buggy critter is. Or the less buggy your computer is. Because it has to, you know, the more the bigger the file size of the critter, the harder it works to actually, you know, render your images. So now come here. Nice. Oh, okay. This is where, this is where I placed it. Yep. Move this down a bit. I actually don't need that part. Let me save it. Oh, I see. So I do have a favorite. There we go. That's my favorite. Plus one attack points. Now it's back to a kind, you know, the common version now. So it's pretty easy. It's it requires work, but it's. I like doing the work. But yeah, it's pretty easy between each uh, version of the card because I only have to change one or two points or one or, two, one or two stats of the card. The hardest part is actually coming up with the cards that are 
not only not only you know you know useful fun to play but also not broken I, I have to you know try to balance out the cards that I create between the creatures some creatures are naturally more powerful than than others so this is the iron squire there we go Common, kind hearted, on a square. And then, and also the creatures are usually, the great creatures are usually the last thing I do because they're, they're pretty much the only part of the game other than uh, the skills of the, uh, the, the skills the heroes they're the part of the, the game that pretty much have long-term um, release format they have a that have a long long-term release format for that I have a long-term release format for so what I, that means is that after I've pretty much finished creating the I'm releasing the the expansion I still create great creatures for for that expansion so right now there are three expansions in the game the Rise of the Burian Clan, the Witness of Divine Comedy, and Gathers Gathers wel Welcoming, or Gathers Welcoming. So I still have great creatures for each of these expansions that I that I'm still creating whenever I have time or have inspiration, and I can still I still release. I don't release cards anymore, simply because. I, I, I'm trying to create the new um, expansion right now so and it takes a lot of work to create an expansion because each expansion has let me show you for example each expansion has creatures they have heroes they have skills they have formations and formations is pretty much just like a, a card type so they have formation spells, formation inscriptions, formation enchantments, formation diagrams, formation arrays. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six cards worth of formations. Then there are domains, then there are creatures, then there are great creatures, then there are crystals. So these are the cards that I create first. So when, it, when I release an expansion, cr the crystals come first, the leaders come during the expansion, all at pretty much all within the, the same month all all at the same time so crystals c leaders heroes and sk the skills are pretty much just like the great creatures because heroes have I try to create a lot of skills for heroes to define them so I'm trying to create uh, create like around 40 30 to 40 skills per hero and I release the skills one at a time that way you know the skills some skills vary in price and if I have all 40 skills in one pack, not 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 only do you know not everyone likes the same skills. The, the skills vary. It gives the players the option to choose what skills to buy, what skills not to buy. Instead of buying the whole pack for a lot of money, you can just choose what skills you want to buy. That's how it is with the great creatures as well. There's not a pack that has all great creatures of a expansion. They come one at a time. But the heroes. The, there's only the, the the way I cr um, release heroes is I release them as a set. So all seven heroes of a c these each th these um seven heroes have seven heroes within them. So there's seven heroes. There's seven versions of a Verda Grease hero, and all this all these seven versions come in one pack. Of a Verda Grease Hero pack. Same with um Jacob Jacob, Gravid, Grand Quicker. So there's seven each and each comes within their own pack. Then if I want to create more heroes later on, I create them all inside one pack. So you can you can't buy a hero one hero at a time, one hero card at a time. You buy them as a as a set. That also makes it easier for you know to for you to Choose between heroes that you you know you like, because each hero, each hero's version has different effects. So buying all seven of them as a pack gives you more variety. For, you know what to play with.
while the skills are even more, you know, they vary even more. So they give you more, you know, they give you more choices and there there's there are a lot more skills per hero. So I, I prefer releasing the hero the skills one at a time. But usually before um, when the, when the, when I when I release an expansion, I, I actually bundle up a certain amount of skills, so you can just have like a, a, a skill bundle for each hero. But after that, the rest, the remaining skills come in one at a time. So I have heroes to create, formations, domains. These are all co these all come in when the, when the expansion is released. I tend to not create any more unless it's necessary I feel like it's necessary but these are pretty much they all come in when the, when the expansion is released and then after I've released every single card of the expansion other than the remaining skills and creatures I, that's when I release creatures and skills of the expansions on it's pretty much ongoing so the skills and um the creatures are the last things that get gets released during the expansion and they pretty much just come in like once a month or twice a month I try to make it once a month but right now I feel we just stopped creating I mean releasing cards because there's already there's already a lot of cards on my on the website so later on I'll probably end up about once I've released uh, the next expansion I'll go back to releasing cards I've created the cards I just haven't released them because it takes work to give to give the cards, you know, a, cr a cost, a price, and there's a lot of cards for each expansion. So let's go back to working on the great creatures. So I, th I don't think I've saved this one yet. Let's cancel. File, save as. Brilliant. And if you have any questions, you can pretty much just chat. Um, send me a message on the chat, and I'll pretty much answer answer you. The kind-hearted, brilliant version. Now for the next, yeah, as you can see, the creature is actually pretty easy to create. It's just, I, li I like variety, so I like creating more creatures. I prefer more than less when it comes to cards, when, when it comes to a card game. The more creatures you have, the more cards you have, the more variety, you know, they can play with. The more, the more um, varieties you have when you play against other people, it's just the more fun the game is. When you're not playing the same cards over and over and over again. Two attack points. The rare version. And now this one's done. I just go on to the next creature. I think I just did honors, now neophyte, and that's 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 this is probably one of the problems with creatures, with great creatures, or actually this is one of my favorite um, aspects of the great creatures is that since the creatures have different costs, some great creatures are better off at two costs than they are at um nine costs. Because some creatures, like let's just give, let's say for the for example, this one. This the effect stays the same whether it's a two cost or a nine cost. So chances are, if you want if you if you want to play additional crystals during your turn, and crystals are what's required to play the card. The more crystals you have on your side that you've played on your board, you know the the higher the cost of cards you can play. So you would not really prefer having a nine cost card to give you additional crystals because you need crystals. At, you need to have crystals first to play the card, while having a two cost version of this card. Oops, what is that? 
having a two cost version is obviously more more useful than a nine cost because it's you know you only cost two crystals to play it. So while you already have two crystals, now you can play additional crystals during your turn. And every time you play a crystal, so when a crystal first enters the battlefield under your under your control each turn, you draw a card. So having a two cost version of a you know the great creature, the loyal knight great creature is obviously much better than a nine cost. Because now you can actually play, you know, if you if you can play this, uh, you know, at the first or second turn of your game, you have, you know, you have more chances to to win the game when you have more crystals, when you can play more crystals than your opponents. So that's how pretty much how the creatures work. It's hard to really balance it out between each creature because because of the cost, the stats. Some creatures are definitely much better as a two cost than a nine cost. There's some creatures that are way better at a, at a nine cost than a two cost. For example, Battle Brave. It only costs two, but it only has two attack points and two defense points. And uh, the the stats of the creature goes down, like I said before. The stats of the creature goes down by w the cri the crystal cost of the creature goes down by one every turn. So it's it doesn't seem really seem that useful. It's useful if you want to, you know, if you just want something cheap that you can play the same turn. Or a turn after, if you only have, t if you only play with two people, this effect gets better the more people you play, the more people you have, because it goes down every turn. So before it comes to your, if you have like five people playing, by the time it comes to your next turn, a five cost card is not a zero cost card. So having a higher cost card, higher cost version of this card, well, ob it's obviously much better than having a low co lower cost version of the card, because if you have a nine cost. You, you're playing, w you know, there's five people playing, and that's a four cost. Then the next, the, the, come your next turn, it's a zero cost, and you can play it, you can play for zero, and it has the stats of four, three, two, four, I mean, four, three, four, instead of two, zero, two. So this card is obviously much better as a, you know, as a nine cost than a two cost. So that's pretty much just how the game is, how it's balanced. So not all great creatures are, you know, are better as a two cost and not all great creatures are better as a higher cost. So I think, let me start at the next one now. Neophyte great creature. And it starts off, it always starts off with the, the regular version of it. And also, com compared to the common, rare, unique, and brilliant versions that have limitations of how many you can have on your, on your side of the board, on, your, on the battlefield, common, regular cards do not have that um, limit. You can have as many of these cards on your side of the board as you want. So the, 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 the upside is you, have, you don't have any limits of how many, ca I mean, how many times you can play, how many cards, of, how many copies of this you can have on your board. But the, well, the downside is it has no effects and the stats are pretty much very low, basic. So let's not just copy and paste. Let me start this again. I need to read these. So I'm not since they're off, you know, they're turned off, I'm not using them. So there's no point in having them. Paste. This one. I'm gonna change this attack point to one. Then save. So just just having the um, you know having done the um, templates. The templates are actually the probably one of the best things you can do when you're creating a game instead of having to create everything over and over again you can I think you can buy templates online card game templates online probably whatever type of game you're playing or you're creating you can, you can probably buy the templates online as well if you can't find the templates online you can just look at one and just try to create something similar through creator you can pretty much do everything that pretty much I haven't had any issues using creator tell you the truth other than you know the occasional bugs that has been fixed with you know newer expansion newer um updates 
but I haven't really had any major issues with um critter using critter. Now for the billion version. You can see how this one's probably it may be better if you're playing a faster deck because it has a it's a two cost and you can get it back every turn. You can I mean you can get it back every time you're you you're dealt damage. So this two cost has four when you when, if you play during another player's turn it has four attack points, including that one attack point. So it has five attack points for two cost. That's actually pretty useful. So for a faster deck, this will be actually this will be a, a very good card for a fast deck. Brilliant. Rare. So it's seventeen commons, eight unique, I mean eight rares, four uniques, and two brilliant cards that you can have on your board. Now for the next one. Let's see there. All attack points. This is a brilliant version, brilliant, kind hearted. And also, just just to let you know, this nine cost. You see, there's like four. There are different crystals, but the game has multiple crystals. Each expansion has its own set of crystals. So usually, if you want to play, if you if you if you prefer a certain expansion, you can find the crystals of that expansion that the cards require inside the same expansion. So, for example, this card has a metro crystal cost. That's what that's that's what this um color symbolizes a metro crystal cost. That means you can play using any crystals you want, but it also comes with with its own crystals that you can use. See, it has a metro crystal, and each these crystals have any crystal ha all crystals that have different you know the common red unique and brilliant version. They have four different versions are all. You know, uh, advanced cards, so they have a cost. They have a limit to the amount of cards you can, you know, you can put on the board. So it's a common. They have a common, rare, unique, and brilliant version. So it also also falls in line with that common seventeen common. Um, eight rare. And four uniques, and two brilliants. So every card, almost every card in the game has, you know, fall has follows that um that mechanic even the diagram I haven't created any diagrams yet I haven't created any of these yet because let's just say even the domains have a common oh, a common a rare unique and brilliant version so you really have to mind what type of cards you put in your deck because you don't want to be stuck replacing all your cards from the board especially when the cards cost a lot to play Oh, okay. 
think I messed up. Save as. There we go. Common, kind hearted. Kind hearted. Then me. And finally, the rare version. And if you want to download the instructions of the game, it's free. I'll probably post it online in the description of this um of this stream. And also, in my in, in the following streams, I'll see if I can find a way to. Um, I'm still I'm still need to use in Twitch. So I'll see if I can find a way to put, you know, more descriptions in the, in the description boxes of my stream. So you can pretty much just download the game. I'll also leave the the link to the website where you can find every every card of the game that I pretty much released. So you can see there's the the first expansion, Rise of the Beer and Clan. The second expansion, Gothar is welcoming. The third expansion, Witness the Divine Comedy. And then this expansion that's coming up, Knights of Temis. The Knights of Temis um, expansion is pretty much just, it's going to be, um, it's supposed to be an expansion that pretty much connect, connects all the other expansions together. Because you see how this expansion has um, the crystal cost, is, it's, it's um, green, it's an aura crystal. So you can only play aura crystal. You can only have aura crystals on the board. You can only play this card using aura crystal. Same with um the rise of the Buren clan. You can see how the crystals are. The cost is blue. So it requires a mana crystal to play it. And similar with the uh, witness the divine comedy. You can see, well, not this one. Hold on a second. Let me go to crystals. I guess I'll click on one of them. You can see how there's uh, an ether crystal. So each expansion has its own set of crystals. Even this, this uh, um, the Witness of Divine Comedy has three cr sets of crystals. Has a mana crystal. A metro crystal and an ether crystal while the knights of temis being something that I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm creating to pretty much just you know connect all the expansions together all the cards have a metro crystal cost that means you can play them using you can play them using any crystal of your choosing you can play this card using eight mana crystals eight ether crystals eight metro crystals or eight aura crystals so they're pretty much it's just a, like a universal crystal cost. So it makes it easier for you to build decks when you have a universal, you know, a set of universal cards that you can use to, you know, to build a deck with. So you're not only just choosing, you, you, you don't only have an option of only choosing one set of um, expansion cards to use. You can use multiple at this point once once this expansion comes out. It also has um the crys the crystals of this expansion are also metro crystals meaning that um a metro crystal means that let me just give you this one it, where is it this one it means that um you can you can you can pretty much play any card using this crystal so if the card requires a, a, a four mana crystals you can it, if it requires three mana crystals you can use this card, this crystal, to play it, because this represents, this gives you, 
three mana crystals when you when you tap it to play cards. So that's pretty much just how the game works when it comes to crystals. And that's pretty much why I'm I'm creating the Knights of Themis expansion to be like a you know, like I said, like a a bridge between between um expansions and between crystals. And um, I'll be wrapping it up in a few minutes. So I'll just show you one more thing. Um, the Knights of Temis expansion, pretty much just like every other uh, card in the game, every other expansion in the game is pretty much based around the, the story of the game. So every card in this game is pr pretty much follows the story, the story of the game. This expansion is the Knights of Temis, and the Knights of Temis has um uh, it's about the Temis, the the Titan of Law, the Titan that governs the law of the of the multiverse, of the of the storyline, the world of the storyline. The world of the storyline is divided into seven different realities, or well, it's divided into eight re different realities. While seven of them are pretty much just like different aspects of the first reality which is the which is the reality that um the humans are in so every other reality it's pretty much like a branch of the first reality so you have mana you have a mana reality ether reality um aura reality nether reality space time re space reality time reality and then there's pretty much just like a neutral fraction but each reality has its own set of heroes its own set of cards its own its own set of expansion that's that's pretty much also why I'm, I'm creating the knights of themis because pretty much even during the story there the knights of themis are pretty much like a neutral faction that governs all seven all eight realities and let me just show you the theme of the, for example, the theme, the each each hero, like the Verda Greaves is the is the is the hero is the knight is the knight of um, Temis. It's is the knight of grace. Jacob is the knight of anger. Gravid. Is the knight of um, Jacob is the knight of might, Gravid is the knight of anger, Grand Quaker is the knight of law, Gary is the knight of hmm. uh, I forgot what Gary is, Imania, she's the knight of um virtue, and Carrie Mia, she's the knight of scorn, Gary. I have to figure out what Gary is the knight of. But each night, okay. Yeah, Gary is the Knight of Justice, and each night, pretty much, is favored by a, a Titan. Each of these knights are favored by a Titan. So Virgo is favored by um. The Titan of Destiny. So these each Titan has you know they're favored by a certain Titan, and I've created all card backs that work off that. So let me go to card back real quick and show you. I tried to stream it, but it, when I when I was creating it, I was I tried to stream the card back, but I just couldn't. So Knight of Temis card back. So this is I'll show you. This is the default. The main expansion card back so all the cards that aren't based that pretty much are focused on a hero a specific hero will have this card back so the great creatures that aren't the great creatures aren't focused on a specific hero the crystals aren't focused on a specific hero the domains aren't focused on a specific hero the formations aren't focused on a specific hero so this card does all um, those cards will have this card back but the heroes and the skill the hero cards and the skill cards will each have the card back of the of the um, titan that that um 
favorites then. So Aether is bliss. This um Aether favors um Grand Quaker. So all Grand Quaker cards will have this card back. Um Verto is favored by Atropos. So all um Verto cards will have this card back. Um, the Nine of Virtue. Um, I think the ni the Nine of Virtue is Emania, so the Nine of Virtue Emania will have this card back. Elio's Optimism. So this is the Titan that that favors um the Nine of Virtue Emania. So that's pretty much how I I'm I'm creating the cards. That way, each card has its own theme. The heroes have their own theme. They have their own personality. The way they play, it's based off their personality. It's based off their, the Titan that favors them. And the cards themselves. There are two types of um, Titans. There's the, the Titan of Law, then the, there's the Titan of Discipline. The Titan of Law, you can, you, you'll can notice that... Um, let me go back to um, the Neutral Faction again. Open a new tab. Nice of Femi. You can see that there's o there are only formations here. But within formations, there's formation arrays, formation spells, formation. So the, t the, the, the Titan of Law will only have formation cards as their, you know, as their subtype. Because there are two types of cards. There are formation, I mean, there are two, there are two card types that I'm, I'm, that I'm branching off of from the, the Titans of Law and the Titan of Discipline. There are formation cards, then there are talisman cards. The Titan of Law will be pretty much all the other cards, the heroes, will be focused on formations. The Titan of um, di um, the Titan of Discipline will, will be focused and all their um, heroes and sub-heroes will be focused on uh, talisman cards. They only have formation cards right now because most of the um, the cards that I've created are pretty much more form. Most of the heroes that I've created have more formation formation type cards. These um, the crystals. Every every expansion has crystals. Every expansion has domains. Not every expansion has leaders because some s the witness the divine comedy expansion doesn't even have creatures or leaders because she's supposed the hero is supposed to be like a solo hero that doesn't really you know have any people under them under her. While every other, you know, hero that so far that I've created have underlings and creatures. But uh, other than that, most cards, most expansions, almost all expansions will have um, crystals and domains. They may not have creatures if they don't have, you know, if the hero is not a, if the hero is a solo hero that doesn't have anyone under them, or doesn't control any, you know, any armies or whatsoever, they won't have creatures and they won't have leaders. Other than that, there there'll there'll always be crystals, there'll all be domain there'll always be domains, and there'll always be heroes and skills. Formations, leaders and creatures, these are like the ones that I might not include in every um hero um expansion. So the Titan of Law I mean the Titans of Law, which pretty much just fall under Themis, they're um they're pretty much more positive type heroes I mean p positive type Titans w while the Titan of Discipline are like the negative type Titans where they they're pretty much the mo the hated type Titans that the ruthless type that that everyone fears so as, as you can see from the um, the pictures themselves let me let me go back there we go Titan Images. No, that's not. That's not it. Let me go. Card back. So you can see how Lisa's Righteousness. Th this is a Titan. Lethal's Loyalty. Th th each Titan has its own title. So Lethal's title is Loyal. Loyalty. This is titled Righteousness. 
Um, Himera's title is Laughter. Dio's title is Happiness. And the time and uh the night that she favors is the, the night of justice, Gary. Or Jerry. And then this one's optimism. So you see how they're more positive type, you know, titles. While for example, the time of discipline, one of the times of disciplines is um nemesis, the the time of punishment. And her title is regret so you can see how the you know how how they how they how the, how, how you know how they vary depending on the the titan the titans of disciplines will be probably more ruthless more you know the the expansions will be more negative type scary type while the titan of um laws expansion will be more up you know upright happy positive positive type expansions so that's pretty much it i think i've I think an hour and 20 minutes is probably enough for the stream and i'll probably see you tomorrow or sometime sometime again this week thanks bye